Hello fellow readers of funny pictures. I am Alien. I make video about comic book. Today I talk about American superhero film Logan. Do not confuse with worst car ever, Dacia Logan. This accent is totally not offensive because I am from Eastern Europe. <coughs> ever since the poster hit, People started treating Logan as an adaptation of the Old Man Logan storyline by Mark Millar and Steve McNiven. At first, rightfully so. They're both about an older Wolverine traveling through a dystopian slash post-apocalyptic USA, all draped in a slightly western aesthetic. Of course, Logan has to be Old Man Logan, right? But as more details crept in and as the movie itself launched, continuing to treat it as such does disservice to both works. The comic is a lot more in line with your Dark Knight Returns's and Spider-Man Reigns's in the sense that one of the greatest satisfactions it offers is immutable change and finality, something normal, canonical superhero comics cannot really bring to the table and don't actually even attempt to. There's even this Stan Lee quote saying that fans only want the illusion of change. More than anything, the comic is a send-off to the entire Marvel Universe imagining one of his darkest timelines where the villains finally won and carved the world for themselves. Logan becomes just a set of eyes through which we witness this world for ourselves in its final wretched days. The movie is slightly smaller, more character based and quite uninterested in the larger superhero universe. As with most superhero films, Logan is a melange of influences and imports, both from the comic and other films. Except for the premise, it has more characters and elements from the Mutant Massacre, Messiah Complex or Death of Wolverine storylines than from Old Man Logan. I mean, which version of Wolverine looks more like Hugh Jackman's? This weird grandpa or this husky hunk? As a story, it probably could easily be described as The Road meets Lone Wolf and Cub or Arias and the Hound's sci-fi adventures. I bet you somebody pitched it like that at some point, then the studios thought they had to attach a property to it. But at its heart, I think, rests indeed the comic. Probably, because that's the comic resting at the heart of most good Wolverine stories. Wounded Wolf from Uncanny X-Men number 205 by Chris Claremont and Barry Windsor Smith. As is the case with Logan, Wounded Wolf has Wolverine defend a young mutant girl from the rivers and it uses this as a pretext to look at violence and its consequences. While it sets up some major developments for later on, what happens in this issue comes a bit out of nowhere and remains isolated for a while, which in the end is one of its greatest strengths because it functions almost as an okay, I really shouldn't be saying this term with my doubly wrong pronunciation, but here it goes. It functions as a mise en beam of Wolverine's whole arc as a character. At the beginning of the comic he's wounded and reverted to a feral state. Finding warmth and companionship, he regains his humanity and is able to use his skills, his propensity towards violence, to defend the newfound family. Finally, he reckons with his past deeds and misdeeds, getting over the rage and stepping into the role of a protector of youth. His whole evolution is condensed into one 22 pages issue even anticipating events that are yet to happen and relationships that haven't formed yet. Surprisingly, not only the comic and the film share a number of themes and situations, many of them have originated from Wounded Wolf. This is a comic of firsts and most of them come thanks to the art and graphic storytelling of the great Barry Windsor Smith. Firstly, there's the violence. In the past, Wolverine kept bragging about slash lamenting his wicked ways and other characters were reacting to them in some capacity. But what was portrayed were ripped clothes and a bit scratchier punches. Instead, violence is very much present here, but it's not cathartic or glorified, nor is it so excessive that it becomes parodic or pornographic, appearing as a layer of artifice. Instead, it is raw, explicit enough and ugly. Made even more impactful by the way the characters react to it and the husks Wolverine's rampage leaves behind. Windsor Smith, with his impeccable command of figure drawing and rendering, is one of the few people who managed to walk this thin line with the character. Then, it's one of the first appearances of the Reavers, or of the characters who would go on and make up the group. More importantly than that, it introduces the idea of Wolverine being hunted by the violence in his past, sometimes the one he inflicted, since two of the cyborgs hunting him are former Hellfire guards he mutilated, sometimes unfairly by that inflicted on him. 
Finally, there's Wolverine as a mentor. He already started on his path with Kitty Pride, but this story cemented the idea that it wasn't just a particular relationship he had with the character, rather it became his overall goal. Wolverine as a world-weary and slightly unenthusiastic guardian works so much better than Wolverine as a short, hairy bloke with inappropriate work behavior and anger issues, or as a gritty loner who is somehow a member of basically every superhero team created and everyone's best friend. I strongly doubt that Wounded Wolf was an explicit direct influence on Logan, but it looked at the character in many of the same ways Mangold looked at it, arriving at similar enough takes 30 years earlier. And if Logan makes you want to read some comics, please consider adding Uncanny X-Men 205 among them. Thank you for watching my video, and if you enjoyed it, please consider liking and sharing it so that more people can find it. And if you want to see more like this, hopefully better than this, you can pitch in a dollar or two through Patreon. See ya!